questions. Um, you know, I've got a couple emails, and I've got some, some messages, and I've just seen some talk on Twitter about what is positive disconnection, you know, how are we supposed to use the glove arm? Um, should it be an active pull? Should it be just a, a natural clear? Um, you know, what, what sort of things it is, and you know, how, what exactly is it, what, what's good, what's bad, um, you know, what are the more specifics about it, and I kind of want to address it in this video. So, one of the things that, to me, that stands out about positive disconnection is, it's really just how do we leverage the, the glove arm, you know, for me as a lefty, it's my right arm, is how can I use this arm to effectively rotate my trunk, both rotation fast and in the direction of my target without becoming super linear and cutting off my rotation and not being so rotational that I have no direction towards my target and finding that balance and using my lead arm as, as the guide to get me there. And I think the, the first way I look at it is that the disconnection term comes from being able to clear the glove arm without having to also rotate the trunk. It's disconnecting the movement of the scap retraction, the shoulder blade pulling back on the rib cage without having to also have shoulder rotation or torso rotation involved, right? So it's the ability to be able to clear this arm and not have to immediately rotate as well, which is where some guys get into trouble. I see that a lot in my analysis. You get guys that, or that as soon as the, the arm starts to clear is when the shoulders rotate as well, right? There's no disconnection of the two movements. And that's, that's the first thing that needs to be addressed, that, that needs to be looked at is, are you separating those two movements? Is it a distinctive clearing of the glove arm before I rotate my shoulders? or am I doing them all at the same time? The second reason why that's so important is mostly because if I don't allow this shoulder blade to get back and retract it out of the way, so essentially thinking about this being my rib cage and this being the shoulder blade on, on, the, on the ribs, if I don't effectively pull that back, my ribs don't have any room to rotate. Because I don't have any room for my ribs to rotate, I'm gonna compensate likely in one of two ways. I'm going to either try to rotate through my lower back, which is not what your lumbar spine is designed to do, and that causes a whole longer list of issues, or because I don't have any room to rotate because I'm out of room, right, my, my scap is forward as it can get, I don't have any more room to rotate, I have to get super linear, right? So if I don't ever get this arm out of the way, I get super linear, I don't have room to rotate, and my trunk, my trunk pushes too far forward, and I lose rotational power. We all know rotation is power. If I can't rotate fast in this game, you have no chance, right? So if I'm super linear, I'm cutting off and I'm getting too linear, too directional, solely because my rib cage or my, my shoulder blade didn't keep, create room for my rib cage to rotate. Right? And that's why it needs to be able to clear. Whereas if I clear that off that shoulder blade, I pull that shoulder blade back along its along the, along the ribs, now all of a sudden my ribs have room to rotate along the shoulder blade, right? I have room now. Shoulder blade's clear. I have room to actually be able to rotate. I can rotate through my T-spine and not through my lumbar spine. Which is so fun. hopefully that helps. I want to give you guys sort of an idea. So what I sort of look for is seeing this lead arm sort of clear and sort of fold down and out of the way. Um, some cues I use can be uh, taking your, your lead arm to the hip. Right, for some, that seems to help create the direction we want. Um, I try to stay away from that cue with guys that are overly tight lats, only because if my lats are overly tight and I'm pulling my arm slide down, trying to get here isn't necessarily a good position for me. So for a guy who's overly tight lats and has to lower the arm slide in general, I might think just, just think of it as like an active row, right? I'm trying to row without having to rotate, and that might help speed up my arm that way in a more functional path for that athlete, right? So if you've got overly tight lats, trying to clear this arm down with lats pulling me down, probably not the right arm. Probably not ideal for that athlete. Uh, but essentially what I want to see is the lead arm be done. And I've seen this talk by Matt Daniels at Drive On. I want to give him credit because this is where I got it from. Um, talking about how the lead arm should effectively be done by the time the throwing arm starts to internally rotate, right? So this arm should be clear, out of the way, shoulders pull back, and it's essentially done. Any movement you get from the glove arm at this point is just a product of shoulder rotation, right? So essentially this arm being done, by the time the throwing arm starts to internally rotate, the throwing arm has finished its movement. And then the other movement I get as a result is just intent from rotation, right? This, you see a lot of guys that are here and then you see this glove arm fly up, that's not an act of like me pulling this arm up, that's just a, a result of my rotational power. So hopefully this video helps. 
uh, kind of discuss what we talked about, why we're trying to get positive disconnection, what it is, and why it's so important to have the, the lead arm sort of leveraging. Um, and another really good, there's another good video, I'll link it to it, from Ben Brewster at Tread Athletics talking about these also shouldn't be two separate movements, right? It shouldn't be a clear and then a throw, right? It should be as a leverage to help me rotate more efficiently. That's the ultimate goal of the lead glove arm. It shouldn't be this super aggressive pull and it, and it throws off my sequencing. It should be within sequence trying to help me throw as hard as humanly possible. Hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. Uh, if you have any suggestions for a new video, please let me know.